early in this amazing century, photography is born. Working with crude apparatus under great difficulties, young pioneers discovered the secret of silver nitrate, still the basis of photography. Early photographs are known as tintypes and calotypes. Correct likenesses are much prized. Crude, expensive, often unsuccessful, they are the forerunners of the snapshot of today. The early camera is a tiny wooden box. A hundred years later, it has grown to this, and this, the movie camera on which this film was taken. Although the newfangled railway is the novelty of the day, the stagecoach is still supreme on the road and the private carriage is the hallmark of the quality, bowled along into the 1840s, when parental discipline was stronger than it is today. Children should be seen and not heard. Spare the rod and spoil the child. And what does my lady dress in the 1840s? The influence of the young queen is being reflected in the fashions of the period. Gaiety and flightiness are going, and in their stead is a quiet simplicity which has a charm of its own. Bodices are being worn longer, and skirts are rather full. Hand sleeves are going out. Paddy petticoats are highly recommended, my dear. Even in these days, shops have an attraction for the fair sex. To these two ladies, one is of particular interest. In Worcester Street, Birmingham, the birthplace of Bird's custard and baking powder, invented by Alfred Burr in 1837. This wife, in delicate health, could not eat eggs, or bread made with yeast. Alfred Bird called triumph to his age, and the hundred-year-old custard powder was born, with Alfred Bird leading the way in advertising. The dancing ball, forerunner of all window displays, Turn on the pages. 1858, August the 18th. Man attempts to bridge the Atlantic by cable. Half a million pounds have been spent on what many people think a foolhardy venture. It can't succeed. The idea is preposterous. Wait and see. It works. We are communicating with America. The first transmission is a message of goodwill. Europe and America are united in telepathic communication. Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Another seal is set on the friendship of the English-speaking people. The sixty enter the sewing machine. And enter a visitor. Never mind that newfangled machine. Have you seen my latest sparkler? And have you seen my latest frock? Criminal days are here. Day fashion cast aside the drooping skirt of yesterday and dons in its stead a dress four feet wide. This style demands eight to ten yards of material, not to mention half a dozen hoops. Elaborate embroidery adds to the charm of this model. Alas, my lady has no line, but the roadways have. The first four trams appear in 1861. Turn on the pages. 1865. Mr. Gladstone is Prime Minister. Income tax is fortunes in the pound. Compulsory education begins. Farm hand to receive the vote. Goodbye to the Kremlin. My lady finds its enormous width and nuisance when she is travelling. So she takes out the hoops and pushes the fullness of the skirt to the back. And so is born the bustle. Zipping is a protracted formal affair in the 70s. No ringing up to make a date and dashing round in the two-seater. Men's fashion seem to have changed a little too. Look at the set of that collar. Did you ever see such a tie? What wonderful whiskers. Manners are more leisurely too. And women still the weaker sex. Prince Edward is the hero of the nation. And his lovely Princess Alexandra has run everyone's heart. Turn on the pages. 
Man power on wheels comes into its own. The first primitive bicycle invades the countryside. A prophetic figure. Turn on the pages. The 70s. The theatre is still the chief amusement of the day. No cinema nor radio to compete with Henry Irving and lovely Edwin Terry. Fashionable London throngs the theatre. Daily. The gaiety. And the empire. Gilbert and Sullivan. Trial by jury. HMS Pinafore. The Pirates of Penzance. The problem is that it's tight. It is especially elaborate for evening wear. While the lady's partner dons white waistcoat and tie. Turn on the pages. 1878. Sir Alfred Bird, son of the founder, becomes the new head of the firm. Advertising is improved. Famous artists are commissioned to paint pictures. Rival cooks. What, another? Helping herself. Kitchen warfare. Wish I bought a cow. Mm -hmm. His third glass. And now the House of Bird issues its first poster. The poor man's picture gallery has begun. Kitchen warfare. Coaxing mother. Was he like birds? The custard fool. Turn on the pages. We ride to the 80s on a bicycle. And the bicycle is growing up. Cycling is still for gentlemen only. Madam may only wave and admire. Fashion forbids freedom. We rode into the 80s on a bicycle. We ride out of them in a motor car. 1885. Carl Benz invents the first car. The first model attains the speed of 15 miles an hour. The road hog has been born. The 90s, the naughty 90s, our grandfathers called them. Well, we shall see. A daring bathing costume has been evolved. Forward hussies. Modesty is desirable at all times. Let the girls have their fun. We are not amused. Did I remember to lock that door? Bathing costumes are... Sorry, that's a 1937 model. Bathing costumes are made in two pieces, of thick serge and fastened at waist and ankle with elastic. Shoes and stockings are worn with all models. Turn on the pages. Eggs are cheap in the 90s. But they break just as easily as ever. How awkward. And company for dinner this evening. That's just where you're wrong. Mistress knows better than cook this time what's good for the family. Where's that recipe book from birds? Ah, here we are. Now, what does it say? Take three dessert spoons full of... Ah, thank goodness for birds. The guests won't be disappointed after all. Marches on. You remember this? And this? With the turn of the century comes war in South Africa. Woman takes to the bicycle. It's a much more advanced bicycle now, but Dunlop has invented the pneumatic tyre. Do you remember the trousers and bloomers which shocked our grandmothers? And amused our grandfathers. They look very modest when we compare them with the shorts of today. But it needed a lot of courage to be seen wearing them in 1901. Did you ever see such a sight? But 1903 has greater wonders in store. Man takes to the air. Wilbur and Orville Wright.
right make the first flight in an engined machine. I 300 yards in 58 seconds. A world record. Planes develop rapidly. And now, man flies the channel. Woman flies the channel. Man flies the Atlantic. Woman flies the Atlantic. To the Cape, to Australia, round the world, over Everest, the stratosphere. Two-seaters, four-seaters, forty-seater, air taxis, air liners. With every luxury. Speed, speed, speed. More than 400 miles an hour. Conquest of the air begins. Turn on the pages. The coronation. George V comes to the throne. To reign for more than 25 years. Dame Fashion excels herself for the occasion. Other skirts and enormous hats are now in vogue. Walking becomes almost an impossibility. All the fashion must be obeyed. You hear man is dwarfed, hidden, discomfited. But the laws of fashion must be obeyed. And he can always read about the coronation in the Daily Mail, for instance. It is reported in full. With pictures. And yet more pictures. But once again, the House of Birds comes before the public. Do you remember? Turn on the pages. 1914. The beginning of the years of war. learn to play a game. Outdoor sports come into their own. Wartime uniforms have taught the modern girl the value of freedom. Miss 1924 shortens her skirt. And shows her knees. The short skirt is immortalized in a famous drawing, the rhubarb girl. It is followed by the old fruit bird. Then, in 1929, the famous birds are hatched. Something to sing about, chick after chick. Family after family. Generation after generation. So ends our century of progress. From the sailing ship to the Queen Mary. From the first bend to the giants of the track. From the stagecoach to the silver jubilee. From the first number three to the dialing tone. From Crookshaven to this is London calling the British Empire.